On the file, click New. You'll be presented with this template. Go to Advanced Options and change this to Foreground Colour and click OK. This will then present you with this image here, which we can see has a black background. Now the background of this image is actually black because we created the image by choosing the foreground colour, which we can see here happens to be black. Now don't let that confuse you. We chose the background colour by choosing the foreground colour of these two swabs here. Choosing the rectangle select tool, we come down here, click onto fixed and actually choose the size. And then we can change this to 150 and likewise this to 150. This gives me a fixed size selection area, which I'm now going to use here. I'm going to press delete on the keyboard and then I'm going to press shift control A, which will actually get rid of the marching ants around this particular area here. Now feather the selection. Click here and move this up to 100. With this new selection, press delete and actually remove the marching ants. Now look at the difference. You can see with this one here, we have a very straight edge. We go straight from white to black, and that gives us a sharp edge. Whereas with this one, we can see in the middle, it's white. And as we come out, it's getting more and more black until eventually it hits the black region. This one has clearly been feathered. Let's now reduce the feathering and then go through the same process of selecting a region, deleting it and removing the marching ants. We can clearly see feathering has occurred, but obviously not by as much as the previous selection. We will now choose the Ellipse Select tool. Draw an area on the screen, press Delete and remove the marching ants. And here you can see there is no feathering associated with this particular selection. We will now actually go and choose some feathering and come here and select again and press delete and remove the marching ants. We can clearly see there's been some feathering. Choosing the free selects tool, we'll draw a shape here and then press delete and remove the marching ants. And we can see we get a sharp edge here, i.e. there's no feathering. We will actually come here and introduce some feathering, do a drawing and press delete and get rid of the marching ants and you can clearly see feathering has occurred. We can also introduce feathering as follows. Here I'm just choosing the ellipse select tool, which I'll simply draw on the screen with here. I'll now come to select, go to feather, and into this region you can choose something. I'll go with the 50, press delete, and if you look here you can see it's been feathered. Here's a photograph taken in Picardy, France. Choose the zoom tool, go on to zoom out, and this will enable me to see the image and the surrounding area. I'm going to choose the ellipse tool and feather it at 100 and select both outside and inside the image as you can see here. Now just check where the marching ants actually are. Then go to invert and you can see the marching ants have now moved to select this bit of the image that I've just deleted. Then remove the marching ants. And if you look here you can see that the image has actually been feathered around the edges. Using this colour picker tool, I'm going to choose a colour from the sky and you can see it appears here. Choosing the text tool and looking at its options, we can see that the same colour appears here. So the text when I enter it on the screen will be the same colour as that region of the sky and hopefully will fit in with the actual image. With the text tool selected, draw in this region, change the font size to 200 and type in here the word Picardy and resize. Then come over here to the Move tool and move the word appropriately to this region. Ensure you have this layer selected. Come to Filters, go to Light and Shadow, choose Drop Shadow and enter in here 10, 10 and 30. Click OK and look down here and you can see there's a shadow behind the word Picardy. You may now typically want to flatten this image, so come to Image, come down here where it says Flatten Image, and you can see you end up with the one layer. I have now chosen the Zoom tool to actually zoom out so we can see all of the image on the screen there. Please note that the numbers I chose for the drop shadow and the amount of feathering and similar was based on the fact that I knew the size of the image was this size here. If the image had been bigger or smaller, then I would have to alter those numbers for this particular image. And in many ways, this is a question of trial and error, seeing what looks right when you do a drop shadow. 
seeing whether the feathering is appropriate for the image you actually have. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.